when I tell you McIntyre twinged? It did. Which, of course, if you were in her position, you would have, you would have accepted it, right? We're gonna have a fun time, guys. Hello, it's Cher. So for the spooky season series from the Four Horsewomen, today I will be talking about makeup and true crime. I've recently delved into true crime and well not recently, it's been like a year. But today I will be doing my makeup while I'm talking about a true crime story from my hometown. So I actually got this inspiration from Billy Sarian. If you want, you can check her channel out. Like that's that's mainly my inspiration for this. I just wanted to do this because it's fun and I've seen her do her makeup. So you're gonna sit through me doing my makeup while I tell you this really tragic, really unfortunate true crime story. Let's get started. So before I proceed, I did want to say that everything is anecdotal. This is a disclaimer, everything is alleged, everything is based off a story that my mom told me. This is her hometown murder story. You guys heard the word, like the term hometown murder, it's from My Favorite Murder, it's a podcast. You should take everything, no I don't think, I know, you should take everything I say with a grain of salt because I have no research, no facts to back this story on. So with that, I want to do an SPG rating. So all of you know, if you're Filipino, you know MTRCV. I'm gonna do just that. Ang programa ito ay rated SPG. Sirkang patubay at kabayo ng magulang ang kailangan. Maaaring may masiselang tema, lingwahe, karanasan, sexual, horror, o droga na hindi angko sa mga bata. There's gonna be like stuff in the story that's, you know, trigger warnings, sexual assault, rape, kidnapping, all those things. So if you don't like it, you don't have to watch this video up to this point. Go. A few moments later. Okay, so I already did my foundation and a bit of my base, like my under eyes. So I'm just gonna continue with that. So the setting is Davao City in the 80s. And we all know that in the 80s, it was rampant with serial killers. And At least in North America, that's what I noticed. 60s to 70s to the 80s to the 90s, lots of serial killers. Anyways. So the characters of the scene that we're doing, their names are not going to be mentioned because I do not have the permission to use their names. Let's call the victim's name Anna. So I'm going to call her a victim because she is a victim. If your name is Anna, and it just so happens that, I don't know, a similar thing happened to someone you know whose name is Anna, I'm really sorry, it was just, this is just pure coincidence. I'm just using an arbitrary name to maintain anonymity of the victims and the perpetrators. So Anna was a young woman who lived in Davao City during the 80s. She is two years older than my mother, and she was an aspiring accountant. I'm not gonna say the university name either because- There could be legal repercussions, I don't know. But it's a well-known university in Davao City. It's where all the rich kids go. If you're from Davao City, you know which one it is. What ended up happening to Anna was actually very tragic because the perpetrator for her case was someone who was very close to her. So Anna lived in a place called Matina. Matina! And I never personally went there and stayed there. So I had to do my brows off camera because I just realized that I cannot talk for the life of me while I'm doing my brows. So I don't know if y'all can relate. Anyways, she lived in Matina. Matina. Because I'm Bisaya, so it's it's how we say it. Or Matina, if how. How whitewashed I am. She lived there and I think that's the seedier part of Davos City. And the thing is, is that part was still very much like under development. She lived quite far from the university that she was going to. So she would ride the jeep and all these things. So she was part of the accountancy program of this big university. And one fine afternoon, she needed to go get her shoes fixed. The thing is, when she needed to get her shoe fixed, she needed to go to a place where it was a bit far from the university. So she needed to make the trek and she had to go out of her way kind of thing and my mom was 18 years old when this incident happened it made it to the local newspaper and my mom distinctly remembers this person anna so my mom would have been 18 and anna would have been 20. anna went to university she had friends right she didn't have a boyfriend some of her friends and some of the people that she knew they saw her go this was mid-afternoon so classes had just ended the shoe repair shop as i mentioned before was quite far from where the university was. And unfortunately, Anna did not have a car. And that time, the 80s, 
in the Philippines. If you got a car, well, it's still now here in the present time. But if you have, if you had a car, you would 100% be part of like the richer group. And when she needed to go to the shoe repair shop, she needed to ride home because homegirl didn't have a car. Surprise, surprise, her godbrother turned up. A godmother is basically someone who is the son of your godmother or godfather. So apparently, her godbrother turns up and offers her a ride home. Offers her a ride home at like 4.30 p.m. And she was like, hey, hey, you know, we grew up together, that kind of thing. Like, let me get you a ride, da da da, whatever. Which, of course, if you were in her position, you would have you would have accepted it, right? This godbrother person, not much was known about him. Like, I tried to get more from my mom, but she wouldn't tell me like anything about him. Um, I guess it's because like he was just an obscure person in this story until like he committed the crime. We say it, spoilers. I think he did it. A uh, homeboy pulls up. Let's call him John. If your name is John, I'm so sorry. These are arbitrary names again. John was a, I want to say wealthy, because then you can't afford a car at that time without being wealthy, right? When John pulls up and says, oh, homegirl, like, who did you ride? <laughs> Anna says yes, because she lived in Matina. It's quite far from the university that she goes to, and she was like, you know what, it's a free ride, and nothing bad's gonna happen to me. Because I know this person, and I trust him, and you know, my parents trust him, everyone trusts him. This was wrong. This was so wrong. I failed to mention that before John went to pick up Anna. Oh my god, I'm gonna start mixing up these names now because I'm doing my eyes. But before he picked up Anna, he actually picked up his friends. The friends that he picked up were also men. Do you see do you see it now? Like, do you see the, the whole wrongness of it? There were two other men who Anna didn't know. Like, she didn't know her godbrother's friends, but she trusted her godbrother. She was like, you know what? Kind of sketch, but I'll just take a ride from this person because I trust him. Okay, so I did my left eye because this eye is very patchy. I had to do it off camera, so. Sorry about that, y'all. Homeboy John picks up his friends thinking, you know what? We're gonna have a fun time, guys. So bad. Anna sees this and she doesn't think anything of it because, you know, she trusts John and I guess if you trust someone, you can just take a ride with him and his boys in his car. I mean, honestly, it happens to the best of us, honey. John ends up taking Anna to a detour. Anna actually didn't get to make it home. So remember she went to the shoe store, was there for probably 20 minutes. John pulls up with his friends and John tells her, okay, you know what, Anna, I'll take you home. I'll take you home. That's fine. She never does make it home, you guys. When John was driving, Somewhere along the way, he decided he was going to commit murder. Well, we actually don't know, because allegedly, it was him and his friends. Allegedly, he decided somewhere along the way, and allegedly, him and his friends were high while driving. Never do drugs, kids. And doing drugs while driving? No. So, allegedly, he was high. It caused him to make bad decisions, and... But that's, that's really shitty, because... Sorry for my language. Because, honestly, if you're high, you shouldn't even be driving. And to use that as an excuse is like saying, oh... Sorry, I accidentally killed someone because I had too much coffee today. So what ended up happening was they made a detour to the Smoky Mountain. Um, for you people who aren't from Davos City, the Smoky Mountain essentially is a trash dump. They took her there and they did like so many unspeakable things to her. So her parents actually became worried that she never came home. So Anna never came home and she was missing for a solid like three to four days. So here in North America, you need at least 48 hours to be considered missing. And mind you, Anna's parents aren't as rich as John's parents, allegedly. When Anna left for school, her steps were tracked, her schedule was seen, her teachers were interviewed. What they found was people actually saw her get in the truck of her godbrother. Like people were like, yeah, we saw her like walk out the gate and she went to the shoe repair shop and then some people there also said like, yeah, he picked her up. So when authorities finally confronted the godbrother, John was like, No, never saw her that day, never seen her. Like, you know, I didn't, I didn't, I didn't see her. I didn't, you know. I didn't know anything. Thing is, what gave John away was <laughs> one of their neighbors saw John pick up Anna. The neighbor was like, dude, I literally saw you pick her up. So he was being investigated like formally investigated at that point and he was asked about a bunch of questions like where he was who was who were his friends i'm assuming he he did 
let's assume. So by the time the authorities found Anna's body, it had already been a week or so, so her body was badly decomposed. They couldn't determine her cause of death until they saw her wounds. So this is pretty graphic. If you haven't left now, you should leave now because this is where the trigger warnings come in. They found Anna with a burnt punani. Don't know what a punani is, her puntang. Her vulva, because the vagina is the inner, the inner canal in the female anatomy. The outside lips are the vulva, so her vulva was missing. You heard me right, boys and girls. Her vulva was missing. When I tell you my hometown changed, it did. When I first heard this, it was allegedly cut off her. So she was tortured and she was she was awake when all these things happened. She had sexual assault indications on her. She had traces of trauma in her vagina, in her vaginal canal, and she was badly beaten. You know, forensics at the time didn't really do a good job of identifying what was the cause of death, at least for the forensics, but they at least determined that she was beaten before her, her vulva was taken to make things worse. They burnt her crotch. This whole thing was very horrific. So they burnt her and they sexually assaulted her and after they sexually assaulted her they beat her up and they did such horrific things to her and to her body. My mom told me it was a closed casket. One thing to note that this case went to court but it never went into actual trial. I don't know how I don't know how the legal system works in the Philippines, but in the preliminary court trial, that's when it was immediately shut down. So the perpetrators were never brought to justice. And obviously, their names were hidden from the paper when this made into the local news. And Anna's name was plastered all over the media. Her name was dragged along too. And I'm not gonna lie, it's pretty unfair because they use her name as a slogan and then they leave the perpetrator's names in anonymity. It all became like sensationalized for a bit in Davos City, then it died down and it was all just a cautionary tale for girls and women. And my mom always told me if you need a ride home, if you need someone to take you somewhere, I can take you or a female family member can take you, but never ride in a car where it's just you and a guy. Doesn't matter if he's family, doesn't matter if he's your boyfriend, maybe it's different if he's your husband, but if your husband has his friends or if your cousin has his friends over and they're all guys and there's no girl, never do that. And I grew up with that, you know, I grew up with that mentality and I can see now why my mom was very, she was honestly scared for her life for me. Because whatever happened to Anna could happen to anyone else. and has happened to thousands of women across the world. My mom graduated and allegedly Anna, when this unfortunate event happened, she was one year before graduation. She was really close to finishing her degree and finally working and finally living her dream as an accountant and was cut short. Why? Because a few boys decided to have fun? Like, boys will be boys? No. Like, fuck those shit. That is the hometown true crime story that my mom told me a few weeks ago. Pretty horrific. And I had to say, the authorities never got to enact justice onto the perpetrators. They could not give Anna the justice that she deserved. So that is it for me today. Thank you so much for getting ready with me and as well as listening to this grisly true crime story. So if you like true crime and if you like seeing me do makeup and Philippine true crime, you can comment down below and let me know if this is something you guys want me to continue. It is a Halloween special, so I will not be doing this again, but if you guys really want me to, I can do a Philippine true crime series while I do my makeup. Leave a comment down below. Let me know if you guys liked it. Other than that, thank you for staying here and getting ready with me and listening to my very horrific true crime story, which I think about it is my, like my mom had a almost personal connection to it, so she knew the victim. But anyways, like and subscribe. Thank you so much for tuning in to the Four Horsewomen, and I hope you like this video. See you guys next time.